Good afternoon, we're standing in a field at uh, Fincham on a lovely warm sunny afternoon. If, it, if we all run off in a moment it's because there's going to be a thunderstorm but uh, we've got uh, 33 varieties here uh, and uh, drilled, uh, drilled as Ed will tell you in a while uh, quite late in the or early in the spring uh, simply because of the ground conditions we had in this part of the world. So it started raining here. Uh, this trial was supposed to go in at the end of September, but it started raining in this part of the world on the 23rd of September and didn't really relent much until the spring. Uh, so I'm going to be dealing with, uh, uh, whilst we've got th 33 varieties here, I'm going to major really on uh, no more than 15 because uh, out, there's 35 fully recommended variety, wheat varieties on the uh, AHDB RL project uh, uh, recommended list and uh, of, uh, of those 15 out of those 35 uh, are approximately 80% plus of the seed certification for this year so uh, I, rather than go through every single variety I'll concentrate on those that uh, are likely to be popular. Uh, so, in addition, I've, uh, I've, I've also looked at a couple of personal rules that I'm suggesting growers consider. In this part of the world, bearing in mind that we don't have uh, chlorothalonil, a multi-site uh, fungicide for 2021, uh, that uh, we'll consider having varieties that have got septoria uh, resistance of over 5.5. As a variety now that's probably more important for the earlier drillings than the later drillings but still that's a rough rule that i'm taking to suggest to growers if i was farming in herefordshire or something like that i would up that and make it up to 6.5 and that curtails the variety quite a bit okay so there's three group ones we've got in here skyfall the oldest but actually really quite appropriate for for very early drilling uh, for very late drilling early drilling in the new year uh, because of its parentage, so it was quite a helpful variety to have. Next door to that is the uh, bright green uh, non glaucous uh, wheat, there, which is uh, Crusoe, which really is the miller's favourite. And if you're really after quality wheat, I suspect that's what your end user. Of course, always when you're looking at the quality wheats then, uh, of any type, you are having a very long discussion with the end user to make certain you're growing the variety that they want. A third variety in the group ones is KWS Zayat, a very good variety, uh, quite good as a second wheat and it has got quite a big cake terrace these days but do watch the yellow rust, it seems to be breaking down quite severely to yellow rust. Okay so now we're at the group twos, uh, we have uh, KWS Xdays and uh, KWS Siskin. Uh, Xdays is a really interesting variety with a very good septoria rating and particularly suited to this part of the world for later drilling. Uh, doesn't really want to go in before mid-October, but it's going to be a big player with its good septoria and its good spec weight, as well as being a group two. A really good choice after roots in this part of the world. Next door we have Siskin, which in some ways it's likely to replace. Uh, perhaps not quite such a good quality uh, class two wheat, so I would expect that to be replaced on many farms by the uh, KWR six days. So I'm now uh, standing in front of a plot of Firefly, which is a really interesting variety for uh, sowing uh, autumn 2020. It's a uh, KWS for Firefly. So it's a, it's a biscuit making wheat with really good quality par uh, characteristics, uh, maybe slightly lower on spec weight, but still good enough. And I think it'll be a, a very good sound choice for anyone wanting to produce a biscuit uh, quality wheat. Uh, my only slight concern is that um, uh, we've had tremendous difficulty, as everyone will know, with the uh, race issues with yellow rust and brown rust, and uh, this variety dropped its rating from the previous year. And it wouldn't surprise me that it dropped its rating again in brown rust for this uh, next year. So uh, having said that, brown rust is reasonably straightforward to control, so just be aware of that. Okay, so we've moved on to soft wheats, and uh, here's, a, here's a variety that I think has got a lot of scope for uh, drilling this autumn as well, uh, LG Skyscraper. It's currently the highest yielding variety on the uh, recommended list, and it really suits uh, for our, again, slightly later drilling into October. You wouldn't want to drill it in September. Um, perhaps slightly lower on the uh, Septoria score, but still very vigorous and very useful in that situation and you do end up with a soft uh, uh, feed uh, uh, grade at the end of it. I think it's going to be quite a popular variety again for this autumn and you could certainly, uh, we'll come on to 
one or two of the newer varieties a bit later on, which is RG Saki, which would be a really good uh, pairing for this variety. Saki we can drill, RGG Saki we can drill a little bit earlier. So you could easily have, unless you had vast uh, hectares, a, a, a policy of Saki followed by, by skyscrapers, a really good soft wheat policy, and then you wouldn't have to worry about actually mixing the varieties together when it came to harvest. Okay, so now we've moved into a, a bunch of G's in the soft feeds, the real barn fillers of the of the uh, wheat crop, and we have uh, uh, an honorary B, uh, G here, which is KWS Karen as well, in, in between them. But we have Graham there, a very useful, high uh, disease resistant variety. It has had a little bit of yellow rust in one or two places this year, but has that good septoria resistance, which is very popular in the West Country and also in the East, and can drill reasonably early. On my right is Gleam, which I think is was the biggest variety last year, and it's going to be very prominent again this year. Uh, has uh, been seen to have a reasonable amount of yellow rust in it this year, has got a Hereford uh, 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 parentage, but in terms of drilling date, it's very versatile, we'll do a second wheat, and I think in, in my eyes we'll do everything that Graham will do in this part of the world, so it's a very sound choice as a, a, hard, uh, a hard first wheat and second wheat. Gravity we have here as well, uh, yes, a, a Santiago cross, quite like it, very versatile, uh, pokes, uh, it pokes up with a lot of difficult conditions, but uh, again, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's competing with one or two good feed uh, varieties here and might uh, slip away in terms of its popularity. Okay, so now we've got uh, three more of, uh, of the new, three more of the new varieties that have come to the list. Well, two of them have come to the list, and the other one did not, but it still uh, merits some discussion. So we have uh, RGT Saki, which I've mentioned before, uh, a good septoria uh, resistance and a good coupler with LG uh, skyscrapers. I've mentioned it. Next door to that is KDRS Kinetic, which looks a terrific variety, uh, but in some areas has had a, a real difficulty with. Uh, yellow rust. It is a reflections. Uh, it has reflection in its parentage. Uh, for, for everything, every other character for early drilling in high yielding East Anglian conditions, kinetic looks nailed on choice. High specific weight, good standing ability, but it is susceptible. So, unless unless you've actually got good spray capacity and prepared to put in an extra timing, then do be cautious of this variety. But if you're happy to go that extra mile, it's a good looking variety. Next door to that is an interesting one that did not make it to the list this year called KWS Parkin. Uh, now that's got some really interesting characters. It's a very, it's, very, it's a feed wheat with good yield, a reasonable disease resistance, uh, doesn't have blossom midge, but does actually come to harvest really quite early. So I can see that very much having uh, some good favor in the north of England where uh, earliness is, is more important and, and straw strength uh, maybe after uh, on pig farms or whatever. I could see parking being very useful in that circumstance. And if you wanted to spread your harvest, because most of these wheats tend to be getting a bit later in terms of their harvest date, then parking could be something for you. Okay, I'm standing in the uh, the candidates. There's quite a few candidates uh, this year. Uh, 12, 16, uh, 17, of which six are biscuit, uh, which is uh, relatively unusual, and only one uh, uh, quality uh, nabbing wheat. Um, also, out of, out of sync somewhere down here, we have uh, uh, L uh, SY in Insider, which uh, has been is on the list as the highest yielding variety. Has a lot of merit to it. Um, good septor resistance pretty good uh, spec weight. Lodging's okay, uh, so I'm not certain you want to drill it too early, but there's a lot to like about this variety, uh, so that's a good new introduction to the, to the list. I've picked out about three or four out of these. Uh, remains to be seen whether I'm right. There's one here called LG Astronomer, uh, which, is, uh, which is a biscuit wheat uh, with good yield, good spec weight, good standing, all of these things that uh, attract my eye uh, good septoria, good standing, good spec weight, all of those things are the things that uh, attract my eye. And uh, then we also have KWS Cranium, which looks a very decent variety. It's got crispin in its uh, parentage, which uh, has always suited us on lighter soils in this part of the world very well. So it's, that's an interesting introduction. And, uh, and then uh, probably the most important uh, one down there is RGT Wolverine. 
uh, which is uh, the first variety that we've got as a candidate that actually has BYDV resistance. And it is sold out this year, as you will all know, uh, but it is a very considerable trait that has been added to the, to the gene pool that we've got in winter wheat, and we look forward to further varieties in the future. Okay, so we've got just two varieties here to, that we've uh, we've put in this trial, which is uh, High King and High Gardo, two two uh, two of the current hybrids that have come from Europe from from Sutton Union, and actually probably the situation they've been drilled in this year really suits them. Really, uh, the hybrids tend to get a bigger root volume uh, uh, together and uh, actually deal with difficult conditions better than, than true breads. And so this may well, these may well come out of this trial looking quite good. Whether they would do in perfect conditions earlier drilled is another matter. But the whole subject is of great interest because there are new hybrids, uh, synthetic hybrids coming along in the next few years, which will make a lot of difference to how we grow wheat in the future. So uh, there's, these are really exciting uh, uh, developments that we've got. Okay, so I am involved in the uh, AHTB recommended list uh, project, uh, which I would very much uh, recommend to you as, as, as really the place to go to, to to get some really good unbiased uh, information. And I'll point out a couple of things that are different this year, one of which is a very sort of orange box around the, the rust ratings, and I think I mentioned it earlier, but the rust uh, uh, the, the rust races are very sporadic and very diff different in various parts of the world. So we we're, we're, are concerned that, that in some situations these might be an overestimate of the resistance of a variety to a particular uh, t disease, either brown rust or yellow rust. And I think there's been quite a lot of interest in and in people seeing that this, this year. The other thing I would commend to you is uh, that on the... Uh, on the uh, HDB website, you can go to the variety selection tool where you can put in the parameters that you want to put in and it'll give you an agronomic merit for that particular variety. It's quite good. It's a quite good way of actually shortening your list down from the 35 to, to those that really suit your area and, uh, and, and, uh, and the strengths that you're looking for.